Hey there guys, welcome back. This is going to be part two of the generator emergency fire alarm shutdown project. If you haven't yet seen part one, make sure to check that video out where I explain all of what's happening with this project with tying in my fire alarm system into my homemade automatic generator that we have here. Long story short, we are tying in my addressable fire alarm system in this garage into that generator. It's a homemade setup because there was not a store-bought solution that fit what I have and what I need here. So I built it myself and took a portable generator with an automatic transfer switch and put this automatic module on it which this is what we tied into the fire alarm system. In the previous part, we added to our addressable SLC loop, installing this relay module right here. We left off with tying into our new relay module and tying that in to our box here where our generator controller is. And where we've left off for today is what I think is the fun part because we now need to program this into the fire alarm system, set it up so specifically the two detectors in here will be the only ones to activate this module as well as then test the whole thing out and hopefully not but potentially troubleshoot should there be any issues with this. So we're going to start off at our fire alarm control panel here because I need to know what to set that new relay module to, what address to set it to and this system is not as well documented as this, the notifier system in the house so I need to find out what my next available address is. So we're going to go into maybe we'll try read status we will do system point and this is a module so two um let's see if there is a point we know there's going to be one through four let's see if there is five yes there is six Six took me back to that one. So we have point five. We have one, two, three, four, five, but then we skip to nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, I guess, but it's programmed as sixteen. So 5 was taken and 9, but we still have 6, 7, 8. So we can set this to address number 6. The reason we ended up with these funky addresses out here is when I first installed the system, I thought it would keep things cleaner to go 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. and not have repeating numbers. What I mean by that is your detectors and modules can have the same address. You can have a detector at, let's say, address 3 and a module at address 3 because they're two separate device types. However, I thought it'd be cleaner and keep things more organized to go like say one to four modules and then six, seven, eight detectors, nine, ten, eleven modules instead of having repeating of the same number. I don't know why. So we got rid of that. So now we're gonna, we have six available. So at our device here, our tens place there can stay, can stay set to zero and our one's place will need to go to six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now we've got to start programming. So first we're going to program in our new detector. So we're going to go to two for programming mode, factory master password, all zeros, and we're going to go to point program because it's faster than an auto program. And this is a module and we're going to add a module and we are going to add module number six. This is not considered a monitor, this is considered a control. So number one, that is now added. So we are all good there. Now we'll go to edit number three and this is module number six. This is considered control, but we are going to edit it however not quite ready yet because I want to go back to read stats because we need to assign this to a zone but I don't know what zones we have available
Dang, I was hoping there was a spot where we could read the zones. Oh, there is. Zones. Okay, zones installed. We have 0 and 10. So, we had all the zeros, that's your general alarm. And 10 is our only other zone we have installed, which would be our... That would be our CO detector, which is zoned separately to only turn on its CO strobes. So, we basically have everything in the book is still open here. So we've got 10, let's do, well, let's do nine. Sure, who cares? So we'll go back to programming. And first we're gonna finish installing that detector, or sorry, that module point program. It's a module, we wanna edit it. We want to edit module six, so So it's type under control. I wonder what options we have here. Sounder, relay, control, HVAC shut. Well, it's not HVAC shutdown. Uh, we'll leave it as control. Silenceable, no. We don't want it set to silenceable because we don't want it going back just because the silence the system silenced um walk test do we want to go off on walk test i'm going to say no we don't zone assignment we will make this what do we say zone 9 but we have all these other ones available here that would be if you wanted it to be on more than one zone so say you had a smoke detector that was zone 10 and you had a pull station that was zone 11, you could have one of these set to 10, one of these set to 11, so that way either zone would trigger that, and obviously just more for more different. So zone nine, that works. Uh, we'll give it a description. Crap, I just cleared the whole thing. <laughs> Um, yeah, you got to clear that before you do it. Now it's coming back to me. Okay, there we go. Generator shut down. See if there's anything else we need to do. Nope, not that I see. That looks like that should be programmed all good. So we will escape that. We also, though need to program two detectors. We need to edit two of the ones in that generator building. So we can scroll through here to our first one. Washroom, storage room, generator building, and the other generator building. So that's the generator smoke. So that's enabled type Yes, that's all good. Pre-signal, no, we don't need any of that. But we do need to now assign it to a zone. We still want it on 000, because that will make sure it will actually trip the system into alarm. But we also now need to add the second zone. Um, we need to add zone number nine to it. So that's good. Generator building. Yep, that's all good. And you know what? We always could have pre-signal. Why not? And now 14. Um, we also need to assign that one to number 9 as well. And that's good. We'll escape all of this. And I think that's all the programming we will need to do. So you saw that was a little different than your normal reset because it needs to save the new program that we've put into it. So once that's done initializing, now 
we'll move on to the fun part, which is testing everything. So there's a few different tests we actually need to do, however. So I'll explain that once this is done here. Okay, this is reading an open. So that should not be reading open because it's a relay. So I'm thinking we need to program that different. I'm wondering if we set it to relay if that will get rid of that trouble because there's no reason that should be reading open unless it doesn't like the fact that it's a notifier relay which could be the case I just haven't decided yet if I actually feel like spending the sixty dollars on a firelight one when I have notifier ones I'm hoping that gets rid of that trouble that maybe it shouldn't be set to control because it's not technically a control module it's a relay module control module would be something like um, that guy there that CO one where it's actually putting out power like a NAC circuit and it's supervised yeah okay there we go it's probably just the wrong type code in there so you can see this module is now blinking in here so we're pulling I should say so let's put the cover back on so we should also print a label for this cover so you can quickly be able to tell what this module does. I think I printed that on clear instead of white, but that's fine. Okay, it barely fit, but there you go. And it turns out you can't read the whole thing anyways, so, oh well. You notice it blinks green, which makes it kind of look like Notifier, because for anyone familiar, Notifier flash scan protocol, like what is on my system in the house, pulls green. However, the Firelight system, most devices pull red. Control modules and relay modules are the one exception to that on the Firelight light speed systems, where they will blink green. So they do look like notifier when they're in standby, but when they're in alarm, that's a different story because in alarm or when that one is activated, notifier goes red. It'll go solid red just like any other device once it's in alarm. However, on firelight, I believe they stay green. They just go solid green instead of blinking green like it is now. I could be wrong on that, but we'll find out. Now there's a few different tests we need to do. We need to do three or four different tests depending on what way you look at it. First of all, we need to activate the system from a point other than these two. Just to verify that these don't shut down on any alarm because we only want the generator shutting down if other the smoke or the heat in the actual generator building are activated. So should any other device be pulled, smoke, heat, sprinkler flow, pull station, we don't want it to shut the generator building down, so we want to put the system into alarm and make sure this module stays normal. And then we want to test each one of these detectors to make sure that each one is tripping this module. Now all of that we can do without the generator running because you can tell when this is tripped with the light on it. If it's still blinking, it's in standby. If it's tripped, it should go solid green. However, we need to do at least one functional test one time to make sure it actually shuts down the generator which isn't something that we'll be doing every month and we won't be doing it all the time because it's not great for the generator especially if it's under load to just shut it down under load you, you don't want to do that that's an emergency stop scenario you for one don't want shutting down when it's putting out voltage because your voltage will drop and your current will go up and that can damage things trip breakers damage devices all that and you also don't want to shut down a hot motor, that's why we have a two minute cooldown where it just runs without load for two minutes. But should the building be on fire, then um, sure, we can live with that and shut it down, that's fine. So that's why we're not going to be doing that all the time, but we do need to do it once to verify. So since we're going to be setting off the fire alarm system in this garage here, we don't want to set the fire alarm system off in the house because there's other people in the house 
So we need to go into that system and disable the, the point on it that monitors this garage, the point that will put that system into supervisory if the garage system goes into alarm. But the system in the house, the notifier system, is its own deal and they don't put each other into full alarm but if one building goes off it will put the other into supervisory and the house is particularly noisy because if the garage system goes into alarm and puts this house into supervisory that will set off this garage supervisory chime strobe so we just need to go to the control panel and disable the building B garage building So we'll hit this disable right here, garage building B tie-in. So there you go, that lit up in trouble, but that's disabled. Zone 7 building B fire alarm disabled, you can see that on here. Um, disabled, tracking supervisory fire alarm in garage building B disabled. And since we're going to be setting off the system a bunch of times, I'm also going to unplug the device that sends me notifications on my phone when the system is put into alarm because I don't want a thousand texts and emails that it's been off, reset, off, reset, off, reset. So we will unplug this guy right here. So there we go, I would have got an email for that. Phone's on do not disturb though, so you won't hear it. Okay, so first things first, we need to just check some random points that they don't set it off. We'll start with this pull station here. And that should not have shut the generator down. Which it looks to be in normal condition. And we can try a few points because the more sure we are the better. Let's trip the sprinkler flow. Let's trip a smoke detector. Okay, so that's three devices tripped. Let's go back to the generator and make sure that module is still all normal. which it looks to be. Now for the more important test, making sure these ones will trip it. So because it hasn't been tripped yet, we don't need to reset the system, it's still into alarm. So let's start with that smoke detector. Make sure that trips it. Yup, I heard it. So you saw the red lights come on on there and you could probably also hear that trip. So for this one, we will need to reset it because we can only trip the relay once. And we'll reset that. So now, once that is done initializing, this will go back to normal. There, you heard that click. No, it wasn't in focus, but you could hear it click. So once that's fully initialized, we will then set off our heat detector and make sure that also trips or a module here. My bad. I realized I forgot to reset any of the other devices, which most of them would have cleared by themselves. Except for this guy, would not. I only carry a notifier key on me, but it will reset firelight. Well, every time except for when I'm filming it, it will. I promise you it usually will. Okay, well anyways, it will have had that reset, so we can trip this again. I'll actually, I don't know where to show you. I'll just hold it here. There, you could hear that click again. Solid green. That's tripped. I know the horns take a little bit to come on. That's just because the system was already set off and it is set to selective silence, so it's gotta get a little bit more information out over the NAC circuits to tell the strobes to switch from strobe only 
back to horns being on. So that's why that takes a little bit longer. It always seems to be like that. So now for the big test with the generator running. And this is definitely not something I want to happen because it'll also give me a notification on my phone. If the module is trying to run the generator and the generator is shut down from something other than the module, it will give me a fault saying that the generator has shut down, there's a problem basically, and then you have to manually reset it. So it's not a huge pain, but it's a little bit of a pain, not something you want. So this is really just emergency shutdown. That's all it is. Okay, so and start the generator. So now is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trip the smoke detector and that should trip this relay, and it should shut the generator down. Okay, so you saw that worked good. That set that detector off, trip this, and shut the generator down. Okay, well, that worked exactly how it was supposed to. Okay, so that worked exactly how it was supposed to. We now know there's no problems with this, so I can put the cover back on this here. And hopefully the door to this thing still closes. which it does. Perfect. So that shut the generator down pretty quick and our module is now back to normal. And because we shut the generator down, that also does shut the fan down, which is something you'd want during a fire. It'll shut the fan down that's pulling fresh air into the building at the same time. We can plug our monitoring back in here. Now I'm going to have a couple emails and texts to clear. We can also put the system in the house back online because I don't plan on setting this off anymore out here. All right, that's back to normal. All right, guys, well, with that, that's gonna do it for this video. So that worked out well, that worked out the way I intended and shut it down as it was supposed to. So that's a success. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you do have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those down in the comment section down below. And if you do enjoy my channel, make sure to subscribe. Also, if you are interested, I do have an Instagram account at pickle700 for bonus content, stuff posted earlier than you'd see it on the YouTube channel, that sort of thing. Alrighty guys, thanks for watching.